This section shows the preparation and procedure required to perform a thoracic epidural using the paramedium approach. This is a sterile procedure. Hands must be washed and gloves put on. Towels are prepared and the epidural pack is opened. Then the syringe plunger and needle stylet are checked for free movement. The insert is removed from the lure connector and the catheter is unpacked and uncoiled. Patency of the filter, lure connector and catheter are checked by flushing with sterile saline. The patient is then prepared. The back is sterilised with an antiseptic solution and sterile towels are positioned to allow access to the thoracic vertebrae. Palpate landmarks to find the desired interspinous space and hold the chosen interspinous space between middle and forefinger. Raise an intradermal wheel of local anaesthetic one to two centimetres lateral to the cordad of the two spinous processes and infiltrate down to the vertebral lamina. Having anaesthetised the area around the interspace, the main procedure can then begin. The epidural needle is inserted approximately two centimetres lateral to the midline, aiming to hit the lamina. The angle of the needle is then altered so that it is moved along the lamina until the cephalid edge can be felt. The needle is moved along this process until its edge is passed. The acute angle and cephalad direction of the needle should be noted. The stylet is removed and replaced with an air-filled loss-of-resistance syringe. The needle is secured between the thumb and forefinger of the left hand with the rest of the hand braced against the patient's back. Under controlled conditions, the needle is advanced carefully. As the needle moves forward, the plunger of the syringe is periodically tested. Once the ligamentum flavum is passed, a sudden loss of resistance is felt and the syringe plunger can be depressed with the air entering the epidural space. This confirms the correct location of the space. The marks on the needle indicate the distance it has entered the body, which in this case is 7 centimetres. Then the catheter is inserted through the needle and advanced until sufficient lies within the epidural space. 11 centimetres of catheter in this case. The needle is withdrawn slowly and when it clears the skin the catheter is grasped firmly to prevent it being removed. The filter is disconnected to allow the needle to be removed completely. The catheter is carefully withdrawn to leave sufficient length within the epidural space. In this case, seven centimetres was left and therefore four centimetres was withdrawn. To confirm that the catheter lies correctly within the epidural space, the Shah test is performed. The catheter is first lowered and then raised, whilst the behaviour of the meniscus is observed. Any fluid or blood which flows back also indicates that the catheter is in the wrong position. Once the catheter position is confirmed by the Shah test, a test dose of local anaesthetic with adrenaline can be administered through the reassembled connector and catheter. Gently aspirate the syringe to ensure that no fluid flows back. The patient's heart rate should be monitored closely as an increase will indicate incorrect positioning of the catheter. Other signs of toxicity such as hypotension should be monitored closely. Having further established the catheter is in the epidural space, a gauze pad is positioned over the point of insertion and secured with a sterile transparent dressing. The catheter is taped along the patient's back to lie at their right shoulder. The main anaesthetic dose can then be administered.